Hello friends, due to popular demand, you will see and understand how to make a game for Fortnite in UEFN, Unreal Engine Fortnite Editor, with examples starting from scratch to professional level, that is, making a game, and even with our sample games that we will make, all the details of the Fortnite creative world in this course series. I think it will be very enjoyable. By following the lessons with all your attention and practicing, you will be able to make the games, animations and more you want in Fortnite. By the way, if you like this series and if I add something to you, do not forget to send me a portion of the income you will earn by making a game. Also, last reminder, I am publishing this course with the permission of Epic Games. Let's start. After you install and launch UEFN, you'll see the project browser. This is where you can create new projects or open existing ones. If you've ever used Fortnite Creative, you may find there are already some projects here, like these. Islands made in Fortnite Creative can be selected in UEFN and converted into a UEFN project, but going forward, you can only edit your island in UEFN. At the top of the My Project view is a drop-down menu for creator teams, which can be created, joined, or maintained in the Creator Portal. Teams let you share projects between members, allowing you to work together using Unreal Revision Control to stay in sync. In addition to the My Project section, there are quick shortcuts to documentation and community support at the top. Below My Projects are island templates, which provide a great starting point for your island. The blank template is a UEFN exclusive template, while other islands like Archipelago are from Fortnite Creative. Next are feature examples which showcase specific mechanics or functions of UEFN, such as different verse examples and animations. Each feature example has billboards throughout the island with instructions on how to recreate the features and includes documentation links to follow along. These examples are a great way to learn about the features of UEFN. Finally, there are sample projects. Here are completed island experiences with billboards explaining how everything works and containing documentation. These differ from feature examples in scope, as they are completed, polished experiences you can play. All templates, examples and projects may be updated, with more being added over time. To create your first project, head to the Island Template section and choose the blank template. At the bottom of the screen, you can change the project location if you want and change the name. Let's call this My First Hour. Then click Create. After a bit of time, the editor should open. If this is the first time you've opened UEFN, you should see the default layout of the editor as shown on screen. If at any time something happens, like closing a panel or moving something, you can click the window menu at the top and load the default layout to follow along again. Now, let's go over the basic parts of the editor, starting with the top row of options. The File tab is where you'll save and load projects and the Edit tab is where you can change preferences and undo or redo any changes. The Window tab allows you to save and load different layouts or open any needed windows. The Tools tab has revision control settings and the Verse tab is where you build any verse code you've written or open Visual Studio code. The Build tab may be used for landscaping. The Select tab allows you to quickly select all of a certain type of prop and the Help tab provides quick access to documentation. Generally, you won't need to access these menus often, except for adjusting windows or building verse code. Underneath this is the toolbar with important shortcuts. You have quick access to the Save button in the top left, as well as options to open the content browser and select the current level. There is also a drop-down to select the editor mode. You'll likely spend most of your time in selection mode but landscaping, foliage, modeling and animation modes each have their own associated tools which you'll learn about later in the course. The project drop-down menu allows you to manage certain project information such as uploading the island to a private version. The create menu lets you quickly place actors such as lights or basic shapes. The fab button opens fab where you can find assets for your project. The verse button will open the current project in Visual Studio Code and the Launch Session button opens Fortnite and connects it to your UEFN project, enabling you to playtest or live edit your game, which we'll cover soon. The three dots let you change settings such as auto-starting the game. Session information is displayed next, and while in a session, you can start or stop the game from the editor. Finally, if connected to a team, you'll find that information here. 
Under Settings, there are key settings like Scalability, which can be adjusted if the computer struggles to run the project. Below the toolbar is the Viewport, where you can see the world. To move around, hold the right mouse button while over the Viewport and use the WASD keys to move. Move your mouse while holding down the right mouse button to adjust the camera and use the E and Q keys to move up or down. Holding the left mouse button keeps the camera fixed vertically while allowing for panning. These are the fundamental movement controls in the viewport, so feel free to move around and get comfortable with them. At the top of the viewport, you'll find a toolbar with important shortcuts. The menu button on the top left contains various settings, and the next button changes the viewport view. Right now, we are in what's called a perspective view, but you may find it useful to switch to an orthographic view, such as a right view. Next is a menu of view modes. Lit is the normal view, but it can be very useful to place props and view your world in unlit mode or see wireframes and other modes. There is also a menu of flags that allows you to show or hide different properties or widgets, such as viewing prop collisions. Time of day allows you to adjust the current time in the viewport, assuming you're using the Fortnite Time of Day Manager, which is enabled by default. On the right, you can see the project size and different ways to interact with various assets in your world. The Selection tool lets you click on assets to select them. The Translate tool moves assets. The Rotation tool rotates assets. And the Scale tool increases or decreases the size of an asset. You can activate these tools using keyboard shortcuts. Q for the Selection tool, W for Translation, E for Rotation, and R for Scaling. With one of these tools enabled, you can switch between them using the spacebar. Next to these tools is a button to change the coordinate system between world and local space, which lets you manipulate props based on their local position or the world grid in your project. Surface snapping allows objects to snap to surfaces while dragging them around. This grid pattern is controlled by the Snap to Grid menu, where you can enable or disable it and change the grid size. Lower values create a smaller grid, allowing smooth movement, while larger grid sizes snap props further apart. Turning this setting off disables snapping, letting you manually move the prop wherever you want. Rotation snapping works similarly, snapping based on degrees of rotation such as 90 degrees for smooth object rotation. The same applies to scale snapping. You can also change the camera speed for faster or slower navigation within the viewport using the mouse wheel. Lastly, there is a toggle for four viewport views, allowing you to open and adjust four different viewports. Moving on from the viewport, the outliner in the top right shows all items in the world. For example, I have four grid planes, island settings, two spawn pads, level bounds, and world items. Adding something new from the create menu, like a point light, displays it in the outliner. Selecting the point light from the viewport or outliner displays its settings in the details window, where you can adjust the light's color, intensity, or other details. Opening World Settings from the Window menu allows you to adjust settings for the map you're currently on, such as disabling the Time of Day Manager. Lastly, the Content Browser, which you can open using the Content Draw button in the bottom left or with Control plus Space, stores all project assets and potential items you can use. Explore the My First Hour content folder to see your map and game feature data. The Fortnite folder contains various props, devices and items for use in projects, while the Epic folder has materials and textures. You can dock the content browser as a panel or open multiple content browsers from the window menu to access different folders simultaneously. Panels can be resized by dragging their borders and you can move them as needed. Remember, you can always return to the default layout via the window menu. With this overview, you should now have a strong understanding of navigating the editor. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to import assets and work with content in the editor.